Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will be learning how to deploy our Python Flask application to Heroku. Now, before we begin this video, there are a few things that I would like to touch upon. The first thing is, for those of you who haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. This is the only way to grow our channel further. And second of all, this video assumes that you guys have some working knowledge of Git as well as Python virtual environments. If you guys don't do so, I would suggest you to touch some bases on those two concepts because we will be using those two concepts in order to deploy our Flask application to Heroku. Now, another thing that you guys need to notice is that this code snippet has been taken from previous video that I've done on connecting Flask and Flutter application. You guys can find the link to this code snippet in the description below. All you guys need to do is just clone the Git repository and you will be good to go. If you guys have your own code snippet, that works perfectly too. Now that we are on the same page, let's start coding. So the first thing that we need to do is create a virtual environment. Let's open up the terminal. So as you guys can see here right now that we are in the solved directory. That is basically the base directory. What we need to do is we need to go to our root directory where our app.py exists. All we need to do is cd backend code snippet. Let me see if I spelled it right. There you go. And you guys can see that now we are in the backend code snippet. So how we create a virtual environment in Python is as simple as doing Python 3 M when when. This basically goes ahead and creates a virtual environment in the root directory. As you guys can see here, when here basically stands for virtual environment. And you guys can see that now our virtual environment has been created in the root directory. However, it hasn't been activated yet. So how we activate it is as simple as by typing source when slash bin slash activate. This file path is basically if you open up this thing, you guys will see bin here, which is this particular path. And then if we open up bin, you will see activate. This is what we are typing here. So if we go ahead and press enter, you guys will see bin appear here. And this basically states that our virtual environment has been activated. So now what we need to do is we need to first install some dependencies. The first one that we need to install is Flask itself because right now in our virtual environment, we don't have Flask. So how we do that is by doing pip3 install Flask. And Python will go ahead and install Flask for you. And the second dependency that we need to install is Gunicorn. How we do that is by doing pip3 install Gunicorn. Unicorn is nothing more than an application server that will be used in order to run our Python web application. Now, once we have those dependencies installed, we need to put them in the requirements.txt file. The reason we have to do so is because once we deploy the, this application to Heroku, that is going to be the way for Heroku to know what kind of dependencies it needs to go ahead and install in order to run our application. Now, how we do that is all we need to do is pip freeze. And then this greater than sign and requirements.txt. Let me see if I spelled it right. Requirements. Perfect. Let's go ahead. And you will see that Python goes ahead and creates that for us. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a proc file. Now, proc file will basically consist a command that Heroku is going to execute once our app starts. So how we create the proc file is by doing touch proc file. Now notice one thing that here in proc file, my P is capital and keep it that way. And this file won't have any extension, even though it is a text file, but still we won't put any extension because if we do so, if we do proc file.txt, Heroku won't be able to recognize this file. Thus our application won't be successfully deployed. So once we do that, Press enter and you will see that a proc file is created. Now, once the proc file has been created, open it up and type the following command. All you need to type is web colon unicorn, basically the library that we installed, app colon app. So let's take a minute to understand what exactly is going on here. This statement can be split into two parts. 
a process type, and a command type. Anything before this colon is process type, which basically means that this web keyword is the process. And anything after this colon is going to be the command type. That means this is the command that Heroku needs to execute. So all this command is basically doing is it's instructing Heroku to actually start a web server as soon as it starts our application. Now, if you guys pay attention here, we have app colon app. Now, what does it mean? This app, the first one before the colon, refers to the file name. If we would have had a different file name, we would have named it differently. So let's say hypothetically, this app.py was main.py. So in that case, it would have been main. But now in this application, we have app, so we will keep it like that. And the app after the colon basically refers to this app that we created here using Flask instance. Now, let's say if we would have named it something else, for example, project. First, keep in mind that if you changed it here, you have to change it here and here as well, and any other route that you might have defined. Now, let's say this is project. So, all we need to do is we need to go back and we just need to type project here. Just to keep everything consistent, we normally use app colon app because we name our file app and we also name the variable app that has created the instant of flask application now that we are on the same page let's proceed further up till now we have basically created a virtual environment we have created a proc file that has the instruction for heroku to execute and we have created a requirements.txt let me show you what we have in requirements.txt first you guys will see that all these dependencies are required for us to create our app successfully and it is using this requirements.txt file that heroku will get to know what dependencies it needs to install in order to run the app successfully now that we have done all of this the other thing that we need to do is actually go to heroku and create an account now if we go to the heroku website you guys can find it by typing heroku on google and it will be the first link if you guys don't have an account, go ahead and sign up. I have already created my account, so I won't be doing it in this video. But you guys can pause the video and take the moment to actually go ahead and create an account. Once you guys have created an account, go back to your application and type the following command. First, let's clear up the terminal. So the first command that we need to type is Heroku login. That command will actually log you into Heroku. So all you guys need to type is Heroku login. Once you do that, it will prompt you to press any key on your keyboard. Just go ahead and do that. And it will take you to a page like this. Once you press login, you, it will prompt you to actually put in your ID so that you guys can log in. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Now you guys can see that it has logged me in. Once you guys have done this, you guys can close this tab go back to your application and you will see that your id will appear here once we have logged into heroku first thing that we need to make sure is that we have git in our root file so like i said that this video will use git a lot because we will be using git in order to deploy our application on heroku so how we actually go about cracking our directory in git is by doing this command git init this will go ahead and it will start cracking your directory using git now once we have started tracking the directory using git what we need to do is we need to add these files how we do that is by typing git add and then the file names that we want to track so first we need to track app.py it's super important the second file that we need to track is proc file so we will type that and the third file will be requirements.txt now once we have decided what files we need to track just go ahead and press enter and now git starts tracking it we can know that by using git status and you will see now these things need to be committed now how we commit anything is by using git commit and if you guys want to leave a comment you guys can do minus m and then double quotes and just type whatever you want to type so because it's our first commit so i will go ahead and type initial commit 
and then press enter and you guys will see that all these changes have been committed now once these changes have been committed to our grid repo what we need to do is we need to create an app on heroku so how we do that is by doing heroku create and then you can name your app anything you want so let's go ahead and name it app double hyphen and zero 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 three it's a purely random name. You guys can name your app anything you want. If that name has been taken, Heroku will go ahead and it will tell you that this name has been taken and then you have to name your app something else. Now, once the changes have been committed and we have created our Heroku app, now we need to push those commits onto Heroku. Now, it's as simple as doing git push Heroku master because Heroku here will be a master branch. If you press enter, you guys will see that multiple things start to load. Just give it some time because right now everything that we have is being pushed onto Heroku. So let's just wait for it to finish. Perfect. Now you guys can see that here it says verifying deploy done, which basically states that our app has been deployed to Heroku. Now how we can check that whether it has been successful or no is by going to this URL. So if we open it up, here first it says that the request URL was not found on the server. If you enter the URL manually, please check your spelling and try again. Now the reason we are getting this error is because it's trying to go to this particular route, which hasn't been defined in our application. If we go to slash name, you will see that we have access to our application. So in order to avoid that error, what we can do is we can go back to our application. We can remove this name from here. And as you guys can see here that we have made some changes and it highlights it here. So let's push that again. So first we need to do git add app.py, then git commit made some changes to app.py it's always good to leave comments let's say a few months from now you guys go back to your git repo and you guys want to track down some changes that you have made using these comments it will be pretty easy to know which version you might want to work on if the versions after that version were kind of messed up once we have left the comments just press enter and then we just need to do git push heroku master again and now it will push all those changes to the Heroku. All right, perfect. As you guys can see that it has been successfully deployed. So now if we go to this URL again, you guys will see that we have access to our app. Now in order to access this particular route, we have to make some changes to our Flutter application. So what you guys need to do is just copy this URL go to your flutter application and just make some changes here to this url and the other one now reload the application perfect now let's go and test this out let's type flutter just like before and let's send it and now let's get it from the heroku server and you guys can see that we have got the response. Now, if we go back to our web page and reload this, you will see now name has higher flutter. This is Python. So this guys was a really basic tutorial in order to teach you how to deploy a Flask application onto Heroku. Being honest with you guys, it's not as difficult as it seems. When I first deployed my application on Heroku, I definitely had some issues. But in that case, I was trying to go through the documents and was trying to figure out everything by myself. But I hope this video gave you a step-by-step -step guide in order to how to deploy a web application onto Heroku. Now, one thing, if you guys got some error while deploying your Flask application onto Heroku, how you guys can check some details about that error is by doing Heroku logs. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if I go back to the application, let's go to the terminal. Let's clear the terminal. And all we need to do is Heroku logs tail.
and you guys will see that if you guys have any error this will give you an in-depth knowledge about where that error is and then you guys can go around debugging it in our case it doesn't show us any error because the application deployment was successful but if due to some reason it's not then just check heroku logs and it will give you some information that you can narrow it down to that where the error might be and then you guys can go around debugging it i hope this video was helpful for you guys don't forget to subscribe to the channel and look forward to the future videos